the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, as Mary our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word that goes forth from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was meant to do. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You care for the earth, give it water, you fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brings over to provide its grain. And thus you provide for the earth, you drench its furrows, you level it, soften it with showers, you bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness, abundance flows in your steps, in the pastures of the wilderness it flows. The hills are girded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks, the valleys are decked with wheat, they shout for joy, yes, they sing. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed, which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. But creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom 
and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation as we know has been groaning in one great act of giving birth, and not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we await for our bodies to be set free. The Word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The seed is the Word of God, Christ the soul. Whoever finds this seed will remain forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside with such huge crowds gathered round him that he got into the boat and he sat there. The people all stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil. They sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crops, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. You, therefore, are to hear the parable of the soul. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the man who received the seed on the edge of the path. The one who received it on patches of rock is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy, but he has no root in him. He does not last. Let some trial come or some persecution on account of the word, and he falls away at once. The one who receives the seed in thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so he produces nothing. And the one who receives the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He is the one who yields a harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. story of Lot's wife in the book of the Bible, or in the Bible class, you remember how she looked back towards Sodom and then turned into a pillar of salt. God ordered her not to turn back. So that story was told in the Bible class and a little boy put up his hand and said, Please miss, when my mom was driving, she looked back and turned into a pillar box. Yes, I suppose the Word of God can spell different things for different people, but it will only have life-giving effects if we can make it our own. Jesus did say, listen, anyone who has ears. Now, there is a difference between hearing something and listening to it, especially listening to the Word of God. When I listen, the words of Christ, figuratively, figuratively speaking, they drop from my head into my heart. We won't understand their deeper significance if they remain only in my head 
only in my mind. It's like someone with the mind only, without engage, loving somebody with the mind only, without engaging the body or the emotions or the heart. That's the one who sows the seed on the edge of the path. It produces rich pickings, however, for the evil one. He easily comes, if that's the case, and steals the word from our heart if we don't understand it, if it doesn't drop from our head into our hearts. And then there are people whose faith hasn't got a great deal of depth to it. This is the seed on rocky ground which doesn't take root. When God tests their faith with some trial or temptation, they soon lose their enthusiasm for the things of God. The Word of God will only be life-giving if it boosts our faith in God when we are faced with uphill struggles. The Word of God which we proclaim at Mass is an invitation with the words S. RSVP stamped clearly upon it. Now, if my mind is not properly engaged or if it is distracted, then the words of Jesus won't elicit the desired response. It's like someone trying to talk to me while I'm texting on the phone or listening to music or even reading the newspaper. It's a sort of a dialogue with the dead. The sound has been turned off. But carrying a weight of worry on our shoulders can also be a stumbling block from us listening to the Word of God or taking it on board. That's the seed which is sown among thorns that gets choked. Worry uh, or being concerned about the wrong things is like a rocking chair. It gives you the impression you're doing something, rocking back and forth, but in fact, you're going nowhere. Scripture says, cast all your anxieties onto the Lord and He will support you. People crippled by worries are too focused on themselves and their petty concerns for God to get through to them. But when we become focused on the Lord and believe in his word, our anxieties begin to melt away like the snows of winter. Prayerfully listening to the word of God will also mean that I am better able to differentiate between the things of this passing world and that which is eternal. As you know, I did Annie O'Connor's funeral over in Hale, near Manchester, last week. And one of the things I said at her funeral was that she was able to suss out the important things in life and she never got worked up over unimportant things. How about us? If our minds are too preoccupied with transient things, then the seed of the word will be sown in barren soil. At the end of the Gospel today, we see where there are many who do take the word of God seriously. It finds a home in their hearts and so produces fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some even a hundred.
Jesus says, Ask and you shall receive. Let us address our prayers to God our Father with confidence so that we may receive what we ask for. We pray for the Church. May the Word of God, proclaimed in the Scriptures each week, be taken more seriously to heart and bear fruit in all our lives. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that the trouble and cares of life may not prevent us from hearing the Word of God when it is proclaimed at Mass or putting it into practice. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the teachers in our Catholic schools. May they be cogent examples to the children of the Word of God lived out in daily life, especially in the classroom. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, especially those included in our bulletin today. May the Word of God bring them comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. We now pray for the dead, especially Annie O'Connor, Brenda Murphy, John Connolly, and Tony Hayes, who died recently, and those on our anniversary list today. May they be welcomed into paradise. Lord, hear us. We now pray to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who heard the word of God and kept it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause now and pray for our own intentions. We now pray the healing prayer. Merciful God, come to the help of your people, be our shelter in this time of peril, and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease, and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, with praise and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon
upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring even greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an hour share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a Jew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ralph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with us always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
Thanks be to God.